a lot of things go on in the Afri African church, such as sex abuse and molestation, uh, and no one talks about it. Mental health is definitely stigmatised, especially in the Nigerian community and in, gen in general by Nigerian church or health problems. Uh, no one really talks about it, and also there's, um, they also over-spiritualise things. Because of colonialism, black people feel like then this kind of respectability politics, like they feel like they always need to have uh, a pristine reputation so that white people don't have yet another reason to look down on them. Hey guys, welcome to my channel. My name is Sincerely Awosa. If you haven't come across my channel, I upload beauty, lifestyle, straight talking videos. Today is going to be a get ready with me hair tutorial type video. And if you haven't subscribed to my channel, please, please do subscribe. I'm on a target to get to 50,000. 40,000 but I kind of want to get to 50,000 by the end of the year so yeah I'm really really nervous I hope that I do get there please please follow me along my journey um yeah so make sure you do click that subscribe button man I'm gonna be doing a get ready with me with this hair so this hair is by supernova hair uh this is Brazilian hair in three bundles and a frontal the frontal is 13 by 4 and the bundles are 24 inches I believe but all of the details and the links will be down below so I have just brushed this hair and I'm getting ready to just curl it with this Remington curling wand um, I've had this hair for about two months so it's not like it's just new I have had this hair for a while and it curls like an absolute baby girl and the waves just look sexy AF and yeah I really like this hair um, this hair isn't laid with got to be glued I've literally just put an elastic band on it um, and sewn it into a wig and just put it on my head as is um, so yeah, I'm just gonna curl this, do my lashes. So today in this chatty get ready with me, we're gonna be talking about African communities, African families, and mental health. Woo child, woo child, the controversy. Um, yeah, so if you are watching, you probably know that the way that the African community operates can be very, very problematic. Um, I mean, I don't know about y'all, but I find that there's a huge culture of silence within the Af African community. Um, and I think that's one of the reasons why um, a lot of people no longer go to a lot of African churches, because a lot of things go on in the Afri African church, such as sex abuse and molestation, uh, and no one talks about it. And um, Sorry if you guys don't mind, I'm just putting down my colour and picking it back up when I need to use it. Um, and no one talks about it because there's this thing about being African that I think is partly due to colonialism. There's this thing where it's it's like uh, keeping up the appearance, keeping up with the Joneses almost, except I kind of think it's keeping up with the whites. So it's kind of like we cannot allow white people to think that we are less than, um, we have to maintain a pristine reputation, we have to be better than the white man, um, we have to be pure and we can't allow any anything negative to be in our community and if it is happening then you need to shut up and keep it under wraps. Uh, I don't think this happens in all African communities, but for the most part, this is something that happens a lot, and I'm sure you guys can relate. And a lot of the times, it is women that have to be a better brunt of this, of this culture of silence, of this culture of silence and this stigmatization of anything bad really uh, sexual abuse is stigmatized heavily in the african community um, and that goes for the diaspora in the diaspora communities as well um sexual abuse um and anything that is perceived anything that messes up the the balance basically um and one of those things is mental health now i grew up thinking that mental health issues um, and illnesses were something that only white people suffered from because literally no one in the African community talks about it. Um, I don't think I saw any black person talk about it and I never saw anyone in the media talk about it and I never saw anyone 
on fi in films and TV and in, in stories, I never saw a black woman or a black man talk about how they were feeling or how how their mental health was affecting them or or just or just there's a huge lack of representation when it comes to um, Africans and maybe even black people being frank about mental health and mental health illness. Um, so that's one thing. I think there's a culture of silence and I think because of colonialism, black people feel like then this kind of respectability politics, like they feel like they always need to have uh, a pristine reputation so that white people don't have yet another reason to look down on them. And I do think that Africans have this uh, belief that they have to be better than white life and um, how the Christian church, I mean, I can only speak as a Christian because I've been in church my whole life. So I can't speak for black Mus or African Muslims and how uh, perhaps um, Islam um, has influenced the community in that way. But as, a, as someone who's been in, in the church like my whole life, I can definitely say that the church does stigmatize, the African church in general does stigmatize mental health. Um, I think we've come a long way and I think perhaps maybe in today in in today's age it's less so. Um, but I can I can yeah I mean in general mental health is definitely stigmatized especially in the nigerian community and in, gen in general by nigerian churches they don't really talk about mental health and if someone has mental health problems uh no one really talks about it and also there's um they also over spiritualize things um now the bible does talk about um it's weird because the bible does talk about sadness and sorrow and feeling depressed but the bible also talks about people who had a who had a spiritual madness um but i think unfortunately people conflate the two people also conflate uh spiritual madness for mental health illness which is a real thing and which is chemically induced um biochemical imbalance um but because of the lack of education and the ignorance um, of a lot of African pastors and African churches um, people make it seem like if you have a mental illness that you are mad and the only way to solve your mental illness is is through um, sorry there were kids in the yard so I had to be like uh be quiet um but yes yeah, so where was I yes yeah, so unfortunately there's a lack of education and a lot of Nigerian pastors, like a lot of them didn't go to school. Yeah, I said what I said. And so they didn't go to school yet. And then they come to, and the Bible even talks about a lot of these things. And, you know, even in the word it says, my people perish because of a lack of knowledge. And a lot of pastors don't have un an understanding about mental health and science and chemical imbalances. And because of that, um, they cause serious detriment to the church by shunning, shunning people and stigmatizing, um, stigmatizing mental health um, and people who have mental health illnesses. And then another thing that they do is they make it seem like prayer is the only answer to um, mental health illnesses. Now, don't get me wrong, I'm a Christian and I believe in the power of prayer, but I also believe that God gave us medicine and god gave us knowledge knowledge and god gave us people who are so gifted in sciences scientists and nurses and doctors and researchers and and people like that like god gave us so many talented people who have such a deep passion and deep understanding for science and i think yeah there is a place for prayer but sometimes there's also a place for science and science is so incredibly powerful and useful um to humanity and also to the earth as well like to the physical earth that we stand on there's so much that the earth gives us and that science can also give the earth um, to help us combat things that are going wrong with the earth as, as, as in a fit at the physical part of the earth and it's like a lot of pastors don't understand that in the church and I think there's also um, an issue of incorrectly and this happens a lot in the church of incorrectly assuming that somebody who has mental health problems is possessed by a demon or something like that. A lot of the times it's very unbiblical and it drives people away from the church, especially the diaspora who 
uh, a lot more aware of, of things like um, depression and, and bipolar and how um, chemical imbalances cause these things. We kind of just look at these pastas and we're just like, what is wrong with you, Stan? But one thing I do want is for um, people watching this and for the African community to be a, a bit more, vo a lot more actually vocal about mental health. Um, and I think if we're more vocal, it can stop being so stigmatized um, because a lot of um, African families, African parents themselves are suffering from sorts, different sorts of um, maybe personality disorders or from different sorts of mental illnesses, but nobody wants to talk about it. And so it, it creates such dysfunctionality uh, within African homes. And this is happening so much. There are so many dysfunctional African families and a lot of the children are having to bear the brunt of African parents who don't want to seek help because a lot of the time it's the older generation who are very um, hesitant towards getting help and going to the doctors and getting diagnosed and admitting that you know there is something wrong they want to keep up a certain type of uh, pretense I don't know for whom um, but as I, I, I mentioned this in the beginning of the videos this this feeling that they have to be better than uh, maybe white people or better than the neighbors or, or just not seen by their church to be weak um, in, in, in such a way. I mean, I don't think that mental illness means that you're weak, but that's how a lot of, uh, a lot of old Africans um, in, in the community see things, um, which just causes the younger African uh, diaspora to suffer. Um, and it also causes division. So one thing I would also say is just to be more open um, with your children, if you are an African parent, um, older parent watching this to be all more, more open with your children and then to us um, if 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 we are finding a certain hostility within the community there's only so much you can do you know you can't force people and um, to be open about their, their mental health um, but I think one thing that we can do is um, be the change that we want to see so we can say okay uh, we saw this a lot in the community and we saw a lot of older Ni um, Nigerians or African people behaving in this way when it came to, comes to mental health. Uh, but we are going to be the change and we are going to talk to our children about mental health. And we are going to make sure that we invest in our mental health in terms of going to therapists. I will leave um, links to therapists below. So uh, there is BetterHelp, which is an online therapy um, solution. So you can go and see a therapist online or on the phone. Um, and it's all also quite affordable there are different therapists uh, so there, there are ones who are Christians there are ones of different faiths and there are also black and white therapists on there and I do have a coupon for that if you would like to use that that is down below and then there's also the black Asian uh, therapy network which I will leave below if you are um, of uh, the diaspora or, or of an ethnicity and you would like a therapist who looks like you then you can find that below but I think find uh, investing in um, unlearning a lot of the toxic things um, that we've seen in terms of dysfunctionality, in terms of uh, stigmatizing mental health, in terms of being very quiet about our feelings, not talking about our feelings um, because it makes us look weaker than or it makes us, it embarrasses us in some way or, or we don't want people in church to know. I think we need to unlearn a lot of those things before we pass it on to our children and we don't want our children to deal with that kind of toxicity and dysfunctionality. Um, so I think unlearning that through therapy is a great way. I think also talking about this in a safe space, so places like Black Twitter and, and YouTube and even just your friends talking about all of these things and talking about your feelings and your mental health are small ways to creating a big change in our community um, but yeah I hope that that's helped I hope this video isn't too long thank you so so much for watching yes, if you do uh, if you are interested in the hair I will leave that link below and if you are interested interested in getting help for yourself better help will be below with my coupon code that you are able to use and uh, the black and Asian therapy network will be below but yes I hope you enjoyed the video I hope it was useful please please do subscribe as I said I'm almost at my target of 40k for this month I would love to reach 40k by the end of September and then 50k for the end of the year so please 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 do subscribe and I will be back with my next video in a few days thanks for watching bye